Welcome back. In his campaign manifesto charge, Renewed Hope, the president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu noted that Nigeria's power sector challenges cannot be solved overnight. However, he said he would consolidate President Buhari's already existing project in the sector, including the Siemens Power Deal. He also talked about plans to establish new interventions that will tackle the issues of power transmission and distribution, as well as bring power supply to undeserved areas, or underserved rather, areas around the country. Joining me right now on this discourse is the publisher of Energy Times, Kayode Ekudayo. Many thanks for joining me, Kayode. Thank you so much. Good morning. All right, let's just analyze the power sector. Let's begin this way. In recent times, there has been several power grid collapses. But in the past eight years, uh, would you say the nation has achieved significant landmarks, if any, in the power sector? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of uh, impact has been made by this uh, present uh, government. A lot of developments taking place. A lot of progress have been made. I will tell you what I know because I'm a journalist in the industry. Being the, I mean, my publication is uh, basically on the industry. So I meet a lot of people. I see, a, I see many things being done, especially by TCN. TCN. You know, it's owned by the federal government, and a lot of investment is being put into place by the present government. Yes, we have a lot of collapses because it's where the collapses are coming. It's coming from mainly from the private sector angle, the generation, the discourse, the TCM. Yes, because of the fragile system we have in terms of uh, the power line, the transformer, all those ones are being taken care of now. I can tell you categorically now that a lot of transformers are being imported into the country, delivering to each region in the country by TCA. These processes will take time. It's not something that we just come up and they will achieve what we are talking about that I means stability in the power supply. Yes, it might be a long period of time, eight years of President uh, uh, Mohammed, I mean, Mohammed Buhari. Yes, some of these equipment are manufactured to the taste or to the taste of the, to our climate. It's not something we can order from the shelf. So it takes a longer time to order to deliver, and that is why you see some of these things coming uh, coming to the system right now. For instance, within the last day, two or three months, TCN are taking delivery of transformer equipment, accessory, power accessory that are useful for the industry. If you look at the Lagos region, Kaduna, Kano, uh, Akure, you can see that a lot of imported equipment for power supplies are coming to the country. So I, I, I see a lot of things being done by this government. Yes, some of these equipment are under for in the initial year of the administration. Now they are coming, they are coming to the country. And it will take a long of, I mean a long process to install them, collect them to, uh, to the national grid. So I can tell you within the next two years, we are likely to have a steam power supply. And don't be, I mean, don't forget, we have new power stations that are coming up, like Sugeru power plant is coming up before the end of this month. Before the advent of this present government, we have seen the Afan power plant, which was just commissioned by the vice president, which is being owned by uh, the business mogul. Uh, um, uh, so, a lot of investments are coming into the system. It will not take us many years again to get to where we are having a stable power supply. Then again, we could see that since privatization of this this pool, it has a distributor company. And the generation, uh, generation companies, a lot of investment that have gone into in this course level, they are reaping from the existing investor or investment that have been in the system. Mm -hmm. And again, we couldn't blame all of them. Some of these discos are bigger than their management. They are too big for them to manage. And that was one of the mistakes 
the privatization, uh, the privatization committee made. Some of these power uh, discos should have been divided into or cut into pieces. Like for uh, for instance, if you look at uh, Ibada, Ibada Disco, Ibada Disco is one of the largest uh, disco company we have in Nigeria. It covers almost eight states. Eight states. How do you expect an headquarters of a company in Ibada to manage? Electricity distributor in, in, in Niger State. So, invariably, are, are you saying that? Are you saying that some of the are you saying that? Are you saying that? We have in the power supply. All right. My question yeah. right now would be, Kaode, are you saying that? Uh, uh, since you have mentioned that uh, some of them are overburdened as it were, the discos, are you saying that they should further be uh, unbundled, uh, uh, i.e. the Ibadan disco you mentioned? The government has a lot of work to do. Mm. And I can tell you that it will be done because we can't continue this way. One of the reasons why we have this system collapse, inadequate power supply, in ecosystem power supply, in some communities, in some local areas, is because the, the discourse could not manage what they have. Mm. It's not only disco, it's not only by the law. We have them like Kano, Kaduna. They are too big for them. And it was a big mistake for those who privatized the sector. They should have divided, for uh, look at the uh, body again. It could have been divided into three discos. Three discos will have come in from the body alone. But we ask somebody to bid, he bid it. Without even knowing what they are coming to bid, they are looking at the property, the equipment, the uh, on grant, the, you know, to make money immediately. But unfortunately, right. it's, not, it's not like that way. Ask them how much money they have pumped into the system within mm. the last uh, 10 years they have acquired the, the, uh, the, the dispose. Mm. They are making money from the system to invest in the system. No personal money has no personal investment has gone into it. And that's why you have this challenge you know, with, with, with Maroni all over the place. And that's why we will find it difficult to have if nothing is done by this coming incoming government because there's nothing incoming government can do. Mm. But I believe that the incoming government can still do many things, especially on both some of this power plant, although it's going to be legal, All right. it's going to, going to go to definitely that will go they will go to a court to say it belongs to them. But if there is a weakening mm. on the part of the federal government, it can be done. All right, let, be done. okay. Let's uh, move on. Uh, I just want to like get two more questions uh, before we wrap up this yes. session. Now, according to Tinubu's yes. manifesto, or uh, manifesto rather, his administration yes. will ensure that all Nigerian homes and businesses that are connected to the national grid are meter connected. Now, the Buhari administration has already initiated the national mass metering program and the meter asset provider scheme. Uh, Tinubu plans yes. to build on this, but how can he make the most of it? Yes, you mean the incoming government or the present government? The incoming I administration. I want us to be talking about the present government because the current government. But the present government is living in about twelve days, uh, so just how the yes. new one has to harness on what they have on ground. Yes, it's the incoming government that we should be talking to now, so that they can. Yeah, so they can build on what uh, we have right now. Yes, not even build. They can't build because they have to. A lot of mistakes have been made. That yes, yes. A lot of mistakes. So the new coming government is the one we have to challenge. All right. To do the right thing. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, we have yeah. we have about we have about fifty indigenous metal manufacturers. Yeah, in Nigeria, mm. indigenous. There are manufacturing plants. There are manufacturing metal in Nigeria. How many mm. of them are they making use of? Now, what they are doing now is to is to uh, 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 employ most of these most of these uh, those who call themselves meter manufacturer who who brought some of this inside into the country. All what they do is to assemble and install. Those who are manufacturing this meter in Nigeria are part of it. Only only few discos are are, are are patronizing them. These are the people who invested in meter manufacturing, brought the equipment. Using local individual to do to do to do the job, but unfortunately, some of these disco prefer to patronize those who are bringing assembly, uh, who are bringing uh, meter only for them to assemble it in the country. Unfortunately, these people who are who are indigenous manufacturers are discouraged, mm. and that's why you are seeing the gap. And again, there's a mistake which like 
that's Nigeria electricity regulatory company. Yes. That didn't allow individuals to buy directly from the motor manufacturers. Limiting need to only the disco. Now, if individuals are giving the uh, license or individual, I mean, uh, uh, giving the opportunity to meet the meter manufacturer directly, it will ease the uh, queue for almost three or four months with disco, getting this meter done to individual houses or uh, business premises. And that is the problem. And some of these meter manufacturers have been agitating for having these people coming to them directly, buy meter directly, or what they need to do come to them, buy this meter, you will still need the discos to come and install it. It's not the work of the uh, meter manufacturer to come and install your own. Mm. So what we happen is that once I go to meter manufacturer to buy meter, I will only get meter from with a number, with a code, then I go to disco. Disco, I bought meter from this new, come and install me. Then we now match with the code, with the number, then they will do it. But no, it's not done. Now, that is one of the mistakes this current uh, administration made by not allowing individuals to have access to meter directly from the local manufacturer. And what the, I mean, what that means was that the Cisco are making profit on something that they don't even know anything about. It's, you, you know, they are now middle men. Instead of people access to direct purchase of this meter, the Cisco now are in the middle. They are making money from the from the meeting. And that is the reason why we have problem with it. And right. remember they did the zero 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 meeting. How many people got meter on that zero meeting? They said one million plus. All Out right. of almost 40 million people who are on meter. And right now we still have almost five million people who are still on meter. So how many years will that one take us? The only thing that can ease this for massive meeting is what I have said. Allow meter manufacturer have access to this local manufacturer right. to get that meter directly. It doesn't cost anything. All right. It doesn't. All right, Kaya, we might need to bring you on again. We're actually out of time because there is so much we need to talk about, uh, even rural electrification and, of course, uh, 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 the option of uh, renewable energy, how uh, you know this incoming administration can actually harness on that. We'll take um, um, another um, uh, episode on this so we can uh, look at all of these um, salient issues. Many thanks, Kaya, for joining us and your Thank input you so and much. your shirt today. It's a pleasure, sir.